Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now June 8th of 2023 and we are just a couple of months out from the official release of the Ahsoka Tano series, which by the way, both John and Dave Filoni are still working on Ahsoka Season 2 to this day. They're well early into development ahead of its planned holiday 2025 release date. That's their overall window right now. And it all really is highly dependent on whether or not the writer's strike persists. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. And without further ado, let's get right into the subject. Now, we know that the Ahsoka series is going to have much to do with the world between worlds and the netherworld of the Force, as well as ancient Jedi temples, many of which will have a big role in Season 2, but an even big tease in Season 1 in some elements. Now, we know that John and Dave are very busy working around the clock with other creators out there like Timothy Zahn, who is advising the Ahsoka show. We know that Disney executives even want to make Ahsoka the new flagship series because they have been so impressed with Dave Filoni's writing skills on a Star Wars project as big as this, to the point where they even gave him a movie that's going to serve as a gateway to becoming a new trilogy of films. Now, moving to the next big thing here, What's really intriguing and exciting about what they are currently planning for the second season of Star Wars Ahsoka has much to do with a lot of big character cameos, as well as a very well-known location that we saw in Star Wars Rebels Season 4. Let's dive right into this. Now, on top of all of this, with Star Wars Ahsoka's marketing now in full swing, John and Dave are beginning to work on Season 2 already, and have been for the past two months via notes and storyboards. One big development surrounding the second season of Ahsoka is set to establish the world between worlds even further, where Ahsoka returns to this realm via the illustrations. The sequence is planned to progress to a point in which Ahsoka activates one of the portals that leads to a moment in the past. It's noted that in this very moment, Ahsoka is witnessing the burned and charred body of Anakin Skywalker on a medical table, getting pieced together as Darth Vader as seen in Revenge of the Sith. Now, both deleted footage and existing footage is set to be used by Dave Filoni for this scene from Episode 3. Via their notes, there is going to be a big moment in which Ahsoka is crying by witnessing her former master transforming into the very thing he sought to destroy. However, Filoni is planning to shoot brand new footage with Hayden Christensen to be made up as a burned version of Anakin, where he is going to say, Padme, help me, as the helmet begins to cover his face. Now, let me stop right here for one moment before I get to the next big piece. Now, what's exciting about the Ahsoka series, in case you guys did not know, is that Filoni did say that this show is really going to get very mystical, it's going to have a lot to do with the mythology, you're going to learn more about the revelations related to the dark side and the light, good versus evil, the Jedi and the Sith. A lot of revelations are going to be uncovered, not just in Season 1, but also in what's planned for Season 2. Now, so far, this is the plan. They want to make Ahsoka strictly a two-season series first, and if the first two seasons prove to be successful, they're going to make it into basically what The Mandalorian is, where it's going to have tons of possibilities of multiple se seasons moving onwards. Now, what's interesting about this also is the fact that they are going to be using archived footage of Anakin Skywalker getting worked on by the medical droids to becoming Darth Vader. All right, this, so this is going to all involve Hayden Christensen again, where they will be shooting new footage of him saying the line, Padme, help me. And there's a reason why Filoni is doing that, and we're going to tap into that right now. So, all right, Filoni is said to want to end the debate on whether or not this dialogue can be heard in Revenge of the Sith, and wants to make it very clear for a large portion of the fans in Ahsoka Season 2. Fans are going to see new angles and brand new footage of Anakin getting developed into Darth Vader in his suit by the medical droids. Filoni's plan for the scene is to have Ahsoka try to speak to Anakin through the world between worlds, without Anakin even hearing a word for some reason that will be fully explained later on. Now, it gets more complicated than this. In case you guys did not know, the first season of Ahsoka is going to demonstrate the rule system of what you can and cannot do in the WBW. There's going to be some boundaries as to 
what you can change in the past and what you cannot change in the past. And as it turns out, George Lucas is playing a very large role in regulating the world between worlds. Now we do know that John and Dave are gonna use this as a way to change many elements of the sequel trilogy lore, to pave way to tell a lot of legends tales moving onwards, so that's a great thing to look forward to. But here's the other thing on the side of the story, is that the world between worlds is going to have a big rule system that's gonna be controlled by the wills, who are godlike beings, so they're gonna make their way into the equation of the story of Star Wars Ahsoka. Moving on. Now on to the next thing here, this is where things get even more involved, is that behind Ahsoka is said to be Ezra Bridger, via the storyboard illustration, holding some kind of Jedi holocron-like object, which may or may not be a holocron, that is said to have a great purpose in the WBW for a reason that will also be explained at some point in time in this story as it unravels. Now again, what I like so much about Ahsoka so far through the marketing is that they know to keep things down to a bare minimum. They haven't really been revealing all too much. We got that trailer just yesterday where yes, they unveiled a little bit more of Shin Hati and Sabine Wren holding Ezra's lightsaber, stuff like that. Very great cinematography, by the way. Beautifully shot. It looks like a movie. It doesn't look like a fan film at all on any level. So big props to Filoni for getting Lucasfilm, for getting Disney to up the budget of Star Wars Ahsoka. Now what's interesting about this also is that we all have to be very well aware that what they are doing in the world between worlds is also going to have a big impact on the turn of events that will happen down the road. So again, part of Ahsoka Season 1, it's going to be about consequences of using the WBW, what happens if you change specific elements of the past and or the future, stuff like that. Now, I can see how a lot of fans are going to have issues with Dave Baloney of uh, bringing in this time travel element. I don't see a problem with that at all because it's not being used in the traditional sense like Back to the Future. It's way different. It's basically spectating and kind of manipulating the elements of the past and or the future, but not exactly traveling back in time, if that makes sense. It's like you go into this realm and you can open up a window to a specific moment in the past, but you're not essentially going back in time yourself. You're able to kind of pull the strings of certain scenarios, as seen in season four, you know, when Ezra Bridger was able to pull Ahsoka out from getting killed off by Darth Vader. It's a very big moment just like that that will be explored in both seasons one and two. So again, we are gonna be getting Hayden involved again for Ahsoka season two. He is back for the first one, so looking forward to that as well. There's a lot of great things on the horizon. I think a lot of fans need to be passionate about the series for two reasons. It's all written by Filoni, and number two, Kathleen Kennedy had no involvement on a creative level, and I mean zero, nothing at all. It's going to be interesting because this is going to be the first project where Kathleen Kennedy never intervened. So anyways guys, drop a comment below, fill me in below what you all have to say about this, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys next time.